What's up gangsters? It is time for a quick video. And yes, I actually do mean it uh, quick this time. <laughs> if you've watched much of my nonsense, you know that uh, a lot of my videos tend to go deep and go long. And uh, in spite of the occasional uh, hater about the length of my videos, um, that's not the reason why I'm doing a short one, because I really super duper don't care if people don't like the length. I mean, hey, there's other channels you can watch. Uh, no, the reason that I'm doing this is because of uh, market demand, I guess. Um, I've seen a lot of guys asking for quick, solid uh, videos on techniques where it just kind of drills down to one specific thing. Um, and, I, and I get it. I know that there's a need for that out there. Um, I, part of the reason why I started doing my, my channel is because I couldn't find a lot of really solid technique videos. Uh, so I'm going to try a new thing. Um, I'm not going to replace everything else I'm doing, but I'm going to try and sprinkle some of these in there, and I'm going to call them my 10, minute, uh, 10 minutes of technique. And I'm going to try to just focus on one thing and keep it short, sweet, and to the point. I may not even do an intro and an outro after this one. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll see, and hopefully it'll work, and, and hopefully uh, y you know people will find it, it, uh, find it useful. Um, so, anyway, this first one that I'm going to do, um, as all of them will, stems from a current project. Um, what I want to show is how to uh, apply pigment fixer using the stippling technique. And that's going to be specific to people who have airbrushes with a MAC valve. So, if you don't uh, and don't care, then you can stop watching right now it won't be useful to you but if you do have that funny little screw on the front of your airbrush and you've always wondered why it's there and what you can use it for then this may be relevant to your interests so let's get to it okay so what i'm after here is a relatively uniform but still chaotic application of dirt on the bottom of this truck chassis because that's pretty much how it happens in real life. Um, the, you know, the vehicle goes through uh, puddles and over dusty roads and through the mud and whatnot and collects all of this stuff and sheds it and then recollects it and resheds it and so on. And so that's what you end up with. And it really, it should be more than one color, and I may apply another layer of a different color. Um, but number one, I'm not super concerned about how perfect this looks on the bottom because I don't really plan on it ever being seen. Uh, but I look at the bottom of, of a vehicle as practice territory. Uh, this is where you do stuff just to hone your skills and test things out where there isn't much consequence for a fail. Um, so anyway, what I'm using is, this is uh, one of my favorite migments. Uh, this is uh, Ammo Airfield Dust. I like the, the way that the, that, that the relatively light color looks uh, against uh, uh, a dark background, dark green, uh, black in this case, uh, with this truck chassis. So anyway, but, but what I want to make sure of is that it's in all of the nooks and crannies. Because again, if you've ever had the unfortunate opportunity to crawl underneath a filthy vehicle, uh, as you often do on a farm, you see that that's, that's what happens. This dust gets collected everywhere underneath one of these uh, trucks. Because, uh, you know, really, you know, when you think about it, there's this cloud of dust that's billowing and circulating underneath the chassis and between the wheels the whole time that it's running over um, a, a dirt road. So it, it does. It just goes everywhere. 
And so you want to make sure that you haven't left anything undone. And you can see I'm just using an old scrappy uh, large soft brush to get that done. And if I have places where I don't want it, then I'm going to just use uh, my airbrush and just blow that off. So you can kind of tailor it so that it has a natural distribution. You can see that I've got it heavier back here at the back than I do here at the front, which makes perfect sense, again, for the natural distribution of, of this stuff. But I've kind of missed it on the front of the rear axle here, or the, the front of the, the front of the front rear axle. <laughs> That's kind of like in Dallas where you, it's the only city I know of where you can be going east on south northwest highway all right so there we go that takes care of that you know that's going to be thrown back there from the front wheels so we want to make sure that's fairly well fairly well covered up so there you go hopefully you can see i don't have the lights turned on here in the spray booth because with the lights comes the fan and with the fan comes the noise so I won't turn that on until I absolutely have to. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to apply Pigment Fixer. And, I, and I'm using the Ammo Pigment Fixer, but it's the same as the MIG stuff. It's just basically super thin, clear enamel varnish. And uh, if you don't believe that, all you have to do is take a whiff of it and it smells 100% like diesel which is always the best clue that it's a mineral spirits based material. Now, here is the key part of this technique. Uh, I'm going to be stippling this, uh, this stuff on there. And this is something that you have to have the right tool for. And I'm looking for a dropper here so I can put it in my airbrush cup. But uh, anyway, um, this is one where you have to have a MAC valve. Uh, and this is my Iwata HPTH. Uh, now a lot of people misunderstand what this little thing here is for. They think it's a pressure adjustment. It is not. It is a flow rate adjustment. And the difference is that um, no matter how much you restrict the airflow through the bore of your airbrush, the pressure, st the pressure that's set at the regulator still remains constant. You got, yeah, you get a pressure drop across the nozzle that you see once you pull the trigger. Like when I'm pulling the trigger now, it goes from 18 to or 17 to 15, but it still is a uh, a constant pressure. I got to make sure my needle is moving here. This airbrush was freshly cleaned, but sometimes you still get a stuck needle, even with a perfectly clean airbrush. So I'm going to dump a little bit of lacquer thinner in there. Nope, that didn't get it moving. It's pretty annoying. I should have checked before I got started here because I know better. But that just seems to be the way things are going this morning. So I'm going to pause for a second and unstick the goddamn needle. Okay, I'm back. I don't know what it is with this HPTH, but I've always had problems with the needle sticking. And I literally did a field strip, thoroughly cleaned it, and left the needle out for like a day before I put it in the drawer. And that needle was still so stuck that I had to get after it with a pair of pliers. <laughs> anyway, uh, sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. Anyhow, so... Uh, back to explaining the MAC valve. This is... 
how it sounds at 15 PSI with the Mac valve wide open. And it would be spraying normally. Now, this little screw is one of those things where you just have to dial it in until it's right. I can't tell you exactly how far to, t to turn it in for this technique, but it's most of the way. And I've, I've basically bottomed it out, and now I'm gonna back it off just a bit. And the best way to tell if you've still got flow is to just basically point the thing at your cheek without any material in the cup, obviously, uh, and pull the trigger, because then you'll, if there is a just the slightest breeze, you'll be able to feel it. And so I've got that now, but you can't hear it. Okay, so I've dialed the flow rate down to where it's virtually non-existent. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna produce a spatter of material, which hopefully you'll be able to see. I'm going to put some uh, of this fixer in the airbrush cup and we'll see if I've still got enough flow rate. So, since you won't be able to hear it, hopefully you'll be able to see what's going on here when it uh, is landing on the, on the model. And I can see from testing it on a paper towel over here that I have, I, have, I have some flow. So, here we go. See that? Instantly, I'm getting drops all over the place. And that's what I want, is that totally random location of all of those splatters. And I'm gonna go at it from different directions and different distances. And I kind of almost treat the trigger on here like a pump spray. Just squeeze, squeeze, just let it land, wave it around. Again, the key here is random. What you don't want is to get a uniform coating of pigment thick fixer all over everything so that all of your pigment is gonna stay uh, equally fixed unless it's in an area where that's what you want. Like say you've got an area where you've got mud piled up in there, that's what you wanna, wanna show. Then you might just really jam it in there and, and blow it on heavy and you can see that it gets completely wet. And so every, every part of that surface is gonna have pigment stuck to it. Other areas, not so much. So again, I'm just gonna work my way around and keep doing that. And then we'll come back and take a look at this in better light and see what the result is. Okay, so got the airbrush all cleaned out <laughs> and the needle out. And, and look, here is the offending paint that was on the needle that that uh, was causing me the problem and that's all it took to stick the shit out of that needle and that's just a little bit of material that found its way into the back of the of the airbrush while I was cleaning it the last time that I didn't get all the way out uh, my airbrush cleaning tool just didn't reach far enough in there and look that happens it's not something to get all freaked out about you know there it is it doesn't mean your airbrush seals are gone or you know that you need to rush right out and buy a new one or or whatever you know it just it's just part of airbrushing and not a big deal you just yank the damn needle out with a pair of pliers clean it up get on about your business and speaking of the business here is the Kraz chassis with its uh, first layer of filth. And I say first because there's every chance that even though I think I like what I'm seeing here, that as I continue to look at it over the period of time that I'm working on the project, that I may become dissatisfied with it. And there are things that I'm going to want to adjust. Like I have some pigment on the uh, side of the uh, drive shaft there. You can see the the one that goes from the transmission to the transfer case. I don't really want that, so I'll fix that. But uh, look here at what I've got on the bottom of the fuel and the air tanks. That's, 
That's the kind of dry but randomly dirty look that I want with enough sort of transparency to it that you can still see some of the previous layers of, of work that I did. And um, I think that is I think that is really authentic. That's that's what I want. Again, nobody's gonna see this much unless I take pictures of the bottom of it. Um, but again, this is uh, technique development. And here's sort of another reason that I do this. Um, and this may seem kind of silly, but when you look at, 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 uh, at, at the real thing, um, you see that a lot of this underneath filth feathers its way up onto the sides of things like these fuel tanks and works its way up into nooks and crannies that will be visible from above. And I want to make sure that that naturally happens. And so there we go. I've got, I've got that on the sides of, of those tanks, which is, is what I want. Um, and, and see, I've even collected a nice amount of it on top of that oil tank right there. Naturally happened. And that's good. Um, that's exactly the kind of, of random but uh, expected effect, if you will, that, 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 I, that I would want. So you can see, again, it all just kind of goes into building the layers that tell the story. Okay, so there you go. Quick technique, uh, kind of a thing on how you can take advantage of the uh, MAC valve on your airbrush to uh, do stippling. You can do stippling with paint as well, but uh, I, I like it for pigment fixer yeah, because it gives you that uh, random and chaotic kind of splatter that is sometimes useful. So there you go. Hope you guys like it. Uh, let me know what you think uh, right down there in the comments. As always, I appreciate it if you watched. Much love.